Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship you all. I'm so glad that you could be here this morning. Um, do you hear me or is, is this microphone on? Can you crank it up just a little bit, Tanya? Okay, maybe a little bit louder. Uh, so welcome to worship here at Center Press. We're so glad to have you all this morning. Um, and welcome to any guests who are present with us. Um, and welcome to any of our online worshipers. We're just so glad to, to have you all here with us this morning. And um, so I have several announcements for you all. And you know what, Tanya, is the um, sound system turned on in the bottom? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. How's this? Hello. Oh, there we go. Wow. All right. All right, here we go. Only downhill from here. Um, so, some announcements for y'all before we get into worship. Uh, this is Trash Pickup Week. Uh, so there's a little sign-up that Fred put on the bulletin board. If you have some free time this week, we'd love to have your help just to keep our little section of Perry County looking nice. And uh, the turkey supper still needs a lot more uh, donations and uh, cookie bakers and turkey bakers. So let me, I think there's an actual, uh, there's a cleaning day on October 21st, um, starting at eight o'clock. So please join them if, if you're free. Um, and the turkey supper job list is posted. Please check and sign up wherever you can help. We need everyone. That was underlined twice. That's how important it is. I uh, found out that they are not above calling you all. So if you want to be spared um, the begging and pleading of the Turkey Supper Committee, you can just uh, sign up now and everyone will win. Um, the, uh, the newsletters for the November and December, uh, sorry, the articles for the newsletter for the November and December edition are due this week by the 14th. So if you can email or drop those off to Barb, that would be great. Uh, and I'm really excited to remind you that this upcoming Saturday is our Fall Fest. This is a, a new outreach initiative that we're doing. Uh, and all of our, well, between outreach and congregational life, we have uh, a lot of awesome people who have been working really hard behind the scenes. And it just is going to be such a fun week. And what we really want to hit home today uh, is we, we think we have enough people who've signed up to help, although if you want to join us, we'd, we'd more than welcome you. Um, but we hope that you'll just come and show up, that it's going to be a really fun event, even if you're only here for an hour. Uh, come and judge the chili and food. Uh, there's going to be some, some great music. Rick Smiley and, uh, and his friend are coming to play. Um, and there's going to be lots of fun activities that are sort of more oriented towards kids, like scavenger hunts and face painting and, and some fall crafts. Uh, but it's just going to be a really good time. So invite your neighbors, invite your family, uh, and just, yeah, feel free to let everyone know. And uh, you can share, share this experience through Facebook on our Facebook page. There's a, um, an event that you could invite them to. Um, and you can also share... Uh, just by telling them, telling them about it, there's also a, a PDF of, of our flyer that was in the, the email that Barb sent on Thursday. So um, we hope that you'll come and, and tell your friends about it this week. And one last announcement. We still need someone to step up um, for the last, um, for the trustee's position. Um, so if you are interested or if you know someone that the nominating committee should talk to, please talk with Karen after uh, worship today. So friends, we come to worship the one who knows us and loves us best. So join one another in praising uh, our God this morning. We come this morning to worship the one who knows our hearts. The Lord knows his people and faithfully serves all of us. Praise God for we have we have been given one who represents us before God. For Christ speaks for us before God, advocating for us even in our struggles. 
Let us worship the one who is faithful to us always. Let us worship God. Would you stand and join us in singing hymn 466, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Friends, in our passage that we'll be reading today, we are reminded of some of the good news that we have to proclaim um, because Jesus was a human just like us. Knowing Christ was truly human in every way, we know that he experienced the same temptations and trials that we all are familiar with. Um, And because of this, uh, Christ meets us with great compassion and mercy uh, when we come to him with our failures. So let us not hold back from the Lord, but give to him all of ourselves, including our mistakes. Pray with me. Knowing that you see us and know our successes and failings, we confess to you the ways that we have failed in love. We remember the ways that we have not loved you as we ought. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We confess the ways that we have not loved one another well. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We confess the ways that we have not loved ourselves well. In your mercy. Hebrews reminds us we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet was without sin. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive and find grace. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, peace be with you. And also with you. I encourage you to turn to your brothers and sisters in Christ and share with them a sign of peace in whatever way feels comfortable to you. Peace with you, Mondi. (laughs) 
Thank you. You may be seated. Would you pray with me while we prepare ourselves to hear God's word? Voice of truth, may you speak to us through your word this morning, cutting through the barriers that we put up. May your word lay bare our hearts before you, so in our vulnerability we may grow in faith and faithfulness. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. Listen for a word from the Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You, you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. You shall honor your father and mother. He said to them, Teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When, Jesus heard, when, when he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For all things are possible. For for God, all things are possible. Jesus began to say, Peter began to say to them, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is God's word for us this morning.
Thank you so much, choir. Uh, kids, it's time for the children's moment. You, you all want to come on down? <laughs> Small group. Oh, I didn't see. Nice. We got a couple here. Wonderful. Good morning. Do we all um, get to Heritage Days this weekend? Yeah? Was it fun? Good. Nice. Um, so I was thinking about uh, the very first time I went to Liberia. Liberia is a country in Africa. And one of the first things that I realized was different is they, the people there greet each other differently. So how, how do you all like greet someone who you're just meeting? Can you show me? What do you do to like, if you're introducing yourself? Yeah? Is that, is that what you do too? You shake hands? Maybe you wave or something or say hi. So in Liberia, they have this special handshake. I'm going to try and do it by myself. You go like this and you, and you snap your fingers. So it's sort of hard to think of the right way to go. But um, you do like a normal handshake, but while you're doing it, you also snap your fingers and you hear this snap in it. Maybe, maybe we can try it together after worship. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? So. Um, how they greet each other is really different. I want to ask um, if you do. Y'all have any like favorite movies or or uh, favorite musicians or something? Or are you like really? Do you have a favorite athlete or someone famous? Do you know of someone? Well, so okay, so there are a lot of like really famous actors and athletes out there that people just go crazy over, right? And um, and when they when when their fans meet them, they sort of interact with them a lot different. Like, they might come up and try and give them a big hug or ask for an autograph. Um, do you know that um, kings and queens exist in the world? Have you ever heard of? Yeah. So, like, in, like, Disney movies, you see, like, kings and queens and princesses and stuff. Um, so England is a place where there's a queen and there's princes and, and other people in the royal family. And uh, I was reading about what it's like to greet them, and it's really different. So if, if, you know, if one of you is a member of the royal family, do you think I can just come up and shake your hand or give you a hug? No. no? Why not? <laughs> well, they don't really have a special handshake, but they sort of have these rules that say you're not allowed to touch the, the queen or her family it, unless they want you to. So if I'm the queen and I come up to shake your hand, then you can shake my hand. But you wouldn't be able to just come up and shake my hand. That would be a big no-no. Um, the same thing with, with like hug or taking a picture. Um, you know, the, the queen or the royal family would have to offer to do it. Uh, you can't just go up and, you know, take a selfie with them or something. Um, so it's really different uh, going up to to meet these, these royal people that uh, you can't just approach them as you would uh, someone like here at church if you were saying hi to them. Uh, so have you ever heard about how, have you ever heard someone call God our king? So that's, that's um, a way of talking about God that we see in scripture sometimes and it kind of makes sense, right? So a king is sort of like the ultimate boss, right? The king bosses people around, um, and it's not like the king necessarily is mean, but, you know, he, he or the queen have ultimate control that if the king says, uh, you got to go do this thing, you got to listen, right? And it's sort of like that with God, because God made us, God made everything. So I think that's what they mean by God is king. And, um, and the Bible talks about this amazing throne in heaven that God sits on, and it's covered in jewels, and it's sparkly, and sometimes it's like on fire. So um, if you saw this throne, do you think you'd feel comfortable just going up and shaking God's hand there and, you know, asking God for something? Or would you be sort of a bit more like, pull back a little bit, and let's see if God wants me to do that? How do you, do you think you might feel a little scared or a little intimidated? Yeah, I think I would, but um, what we're going to see in this passage today that, um, that and, and actually in the Old Testament, um, that sort of behavior of being 
a little cautious around God, a little careful around God, was, was what God um, said was good because um, if God is perfect, God doesn't make any mistakes, but we make a lot of mistakes, don't we? Right? We do bad things. Are you boys listening? We do bad things sometimes. And, um, and so, you know, if, we're, if God is so good and we're so bad that, you know, we, we have to be cleansed, we have to um, be, be made perfect for us to, to go and, and talk with God. And, and that's exactly what Jesus does. Through Jesus' work, he, he made it so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our mistakes. He sees, uh, he sees the perfection that, that Jesus gave us. He, God can just see us. Hey, boys, sit up, please. Yep, you too, sit up. Um, he sees us as his children. He doesn't see us as mess-ups. Um, so because of that, when, when we see God, when we, when we talk to God, we don't have to be all careful. We can just go and, and approach God as if God's our Father. And that's the, the really cool thing that Jesus did for us, that he, he sort of made it so that you, we don't have to be all careful and cautious, that we can just come to God and, and tell God what we're, uh, what we're worried about or say, oh, God, I messed up. Uh, will you help me? And know that God will meet us with love. So... Let's pray and thank God for this. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that, uh, that we know you're still king. We know that you're, you're still this amazing person, uh, but that we don't have to worry about coming to you, that we can just come to you as we would our own parents, uh, that that's how much you love us. That's how you see us as, as one of your, your children. And we just ask, Lord, that you would help us to uh, to come to you whenever we need something, whenever we're worried about something, whenever we've made a mistake, knowing that, that you love us so much and you will greet us with love. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, friends. All right, so our second scripture reading this morning is uh, from the book of Hebrews. Uh, that's from the, the New Testament. It's one of the general epistles um, that doesn't have like a definite audience, um, like a lot of Paul's letters, um, but they're sort of meant for the, the church as a whole. So let's read um, what the author of Hebrews has to tell us this morning about God's word and about Jesus. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul and spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare in the eyes of the one, uh, in the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high, we do not have a high priest who is un, unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who, in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is God's word for us this morning. So I'm convinced that blindness is a universal human condition. Thankfully, not like, uh, like physical blindness from, from your eyes. Um, but the kind of blindness that I'm talking about is, is that we often aren't able to see ourselves or see the world as we ought to. That it's almost like we have these blinders up that sort of keep us from, from seeing the full reality. And, and as I look back on life, there's um, several examples that come to mind um, where I was sort of blind to uh, the way of the, the larger world, or I was missing things, and I uh, became unblind at a certain point. So um, when I was a sophomore in college at Eastern, I decided I wanted to uh, apply to become a student chaplain. And I was at this small Christian university um, and uh, it's in the, the Philly suburbs. And th this position, it wasn't a paid position. In fact, they never had enough chaplains apply for all the positions they wanted to have 
fool. So uh, basically, they accepted anyone who applied so long as you didn't say something crazy in your application or have a, a long history of getting in trouble with the campus security. Um, so it's pretty much you know a shoe in that I was going to get in. But I took this application very seriously. I, I really wanted to showcase my ministry abilities and skill set in it. And um, I remember one of the, the answers to the questions I was particularly proud of. Uh, I have no idea what the question was at this point. Um, but I remember writing something that uh, afterwards I thought was just brilliant or poetic. I wrote, um, I believe love is contagious. And, I, and I, after I wrote the line, I, and I stopped and thought, wow, that's good. That's really good. That's like, you should become a Christian author good. And, and I'm telling you, my 19-year-old Andrew was, was really proud of himself. He, he thought he was going to change people's lives, was going to be this groundbreaking chaplain. And it wasn't long before I was brought back to earth. I, uh, I opened up Google and I searched the phrase, uh, love is contagious, into the, the Google search bar. And immediately, a hundred entries popped up. And, and these were direct quotes of what I had thought was my original thought. And, and I realized, wow, maybe this isn't as original as I thought. But, but then it got even worse, because I realized I had a typo in there. I, I wrote, um, live is contagious instead of love. So I fixed it, and I hit enter again. And this time, it was over 30,000 direct quotes of, again, what I thought was my unique epiphany. Um, so God really helped me see through Google that maybe I wasn't this uh, you know, groundbreaking, once-in-a-generation chaplain that I hoped I might be. And uh, marriage has been another situation that has uh, humbled me, has revealed my blindness from time to time. Um, and on more than one occasion, I've come to Sarah very proud of myself for, you know, something that I did to help around the house, uh, you know, without being asked. Um, you know, like cleaning up after a big meal or, you know, sweeping or doing the laundry. And um, it's funny so, it's funny how so often I find out, you know, I expect to get a big thanks or a big kiss on the cheek, um, but she helps me see something that I overlooked, like I forgot to wipe the counters down, or why is that crock pot still full, and, uh, you know, look at these floors here, and, um, and it's not that she's not appreciative, because she very is, or she very much is, uh, they're just things that she helps me realize that, that I completely overlook in the midst of my chores. So... While, uh, yeah, I believe that I, I'm not the only one who has these sight problems, who has, ha you know, sort of selective blindness in life. I think all of us in some way or another has these blind spots um, that, that are sort of fogging up our view that we, again, we can't see ourselves or, or this world or, or God as we, as we should. We may, we may be focused on the wrong things or... Uh, or we, we just completely miss some of the right things. Um, and, and we sort of let other voices come in and, and interpret for us what's going on in the world, what we should think and believe. Uh, but friends, I have some good news for you this morning from uh, our scripture and that uh, Hebrew tells us how we can um, see rightly again. And it's through God's word. Um, and I, I meant to bring a Bible up here with me. Is this a Bible? No, that's a hymnal. Okay. Well, your Bible, your Bible is one of the greatest gifts um, that God has for you. It's one of the greatest blessings that God has given his people. Um, and, as, uh, and as we'll see today, it really is a part of the good news that we have to share uh, for us. And it's good news that, that God has for us. Um, so, leading up to this part in the book of Hebrews, the author speaks about how God has, um, God has been testifying through, all throughout history his work in the world. Uh, and we, we see this in Scripture, that um, Scripture testifies to, to that, you know, in the Old Testament, how, how God's been active with his people. Um, but even for this author who, who lived in the first century, the, the New Testament, it, it wasn't written yet. So 
So what he's talking about here, he's talking about the Old Testament because that was his scriptures. That was, in fact, Christ's scriptures. Um, it was the part of the Bible that had already been written. Um, but uh, at this point in, in history, even this Old Testament was getting pretty dated for even the newest parts are several hundred years old and, and some of the oldest parts are, are way older than that. But despite its age, the author of Hebrews emphatically states that the Bible uh, is far from this outdated, irrelevant book. In fact, the author says in verse 12 that the word of God is living and active. So even though it's this ancient book, um, God's word is far from dead. Um, it's not this thing that is just preserving Israel's history or, or how God worked at this one time, but rather it's this living document through which God continues to speak to his people. Uh, it's described as an agent or something or, or someone that is out still doing God's work today. As, as Christians, we, we know this work uh, is done through the Holy Spirit uh, who makes God's word come alive in us and, and speaks to us individually and, and as a church as we submit ourselves to it. There have been times that I've read God's word and, and I felt like God wrote those words just for me for this day. I could feel God speaking to me so strongly. Um, and so, you know, this text is still inspiring, is still talking to us today just as much as it did uh, with this original hearers. Furthermore, the author of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews describes God's word as sharp and piercing. Um, this is a imagery used all throughout Scripture, and it's sort of the the metaphor of a of a scalpel, um, where God's, you know, the word is is like a scalpel in God's hands that is um, dissecting us and and is able to. Uh, to cut apart the good from the bad and uh, would, in a way uh, that hadn't happened before because it's all mixed together. Th this action um, of the Spirit through God's Word is both good and at times painful. It's like, you know, having to, to cut into your finger a little bit to remove that splinter that just got ingrained. It, it can really hurt when God's Word opens us up, but will also heal. The author goes on to say that God's word is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. So as we're being dissected by the spirit, um, it's, it, it's able to differentiate for us the beauty and the ugliness within ourselves. Uh, it cuts right through the ways that, that we hide ourselves from God. Uh, it, it, it's presented as this great revealer of our true nature, both the good and, and bad, um, which we're often blind to. And, and in this way, I sort of think of God's word as like this cosmic strainer. Um, you know, like, like sometimes when you're making a stew, you, you look at the stew and it just looks like this one big mass. But if you, if you dip in a strainer, you can pull out and, and, um, and differentiate the, the beans and the, and the ham and the corn from, uh, from the bay leaf and the ham bone that you want to throw away. Um, so Hebrew, Hebrews makes it clear that indeed we are laid bare before God's penetrating word. Uh, it's as if we are completely exposed by it. No amount of dulling ourselves up or putting on our Sunday best is going to cover up our sins before the eyes of God. Um, for God is able to see us as we truly are. And through scripture, God helps us do that as well. So I, I know what you're thinking how is this good news that through scripture we are judged by God? I mean, judgment doesn't feel like a good thing to us, right? It's good news because God's word dispels any illusion for us for, for who, we are, who we really are and, and how good or bad we truly are. If we submit ourselves to the light of Christ from God's word, we can see clearly just how in need of God's love, of Christ's mercy, we need. Um, God's, God's word shows us that we are broken and in need of a healer. And this is where Hebrews goes next with, with the good news. He, um, the author tells us about the one who can heal us. 
Hebrews describes Jesus as the great high priest who passed through the heavens. So high, high priests, they were the most important priests all throughout Israel. Um, God sent, set aside the, the um, clan of, of the Levites um, to serve as, as God's priests in Israel. Um, and, and the priests sort of acted as middlemen uh, during this old covenant. Uh, they would demonstrate God's love for us uh, in, in special ways. For as they accepted a sacrifice from a worshiper who came to offer a sacrifice to the Lord, it was as if God accepted that sacrifice himself. Um, you know, when, when a priest would partic- participate in a fellowship meal uh, during worship, it's as if God himself is fellowshipping with the worshiper. And on, on the flip side, the, the priest also represents humans to God. When they presented the person's sacrifice to God on their behalf, um, and, and when they went into the Holy of Holies, uh, which was the, the most sacred place, it's where the Ark of the Covenant dwelled, and where only the high priest was allowed to go um, once a year, uh, the priest would offer these, these special sacrifices on behalf of these individuals or the whole community to God. Um, so so it, truly, they were a middleman who, who got to experience God's grace on behalf of us and got to give God's grace to others on behalf of God. And what Hebrews is, is asking its readers to remember is that they have... A, we now have a great high priest, in fact, a perfect high priest. Uh, Jesus could be considered this perfect priest because, uh, firstly, he is a man just like us. He became, uh, he became a baby. He was born as a baby, and he lived as one of us. And, um, but unlike any other high priest, he lived in, in perfect holiness and harmony with all of God's creation. Uh, verse 15 says that Jesus was tested in every way, but was without sin. Because he was truly human, he has this sympathy for us, because he, he knows the struggles that we've gone through. He, he, he's felt it. He, um, he's been our, our brother and companion in, in every way, um, through, through the trials and temptations of life, but uh, but even more than that, because Christ is without sin and because he is God's son, his sacrifice on our behalf was a perfect sacrifice in a way that all the other high priests' sacrifices couldn't, could, in fact, could never be. So what the author of Hebrews is saying is that God continues to speak to us through, through scripture, um, which is being used to point us back to Christ, our Savior, And as we do, Christ meets us with grace and then takes us to the throne of God uh, where we can seek God's forgiveness and God's help um, personally. And and this points out the biggest difference um, between how Christ served as a high priest and and how other priests serve. For the the, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies alone. This is the, uh, they were the only person who was allowed in, uh, in, in God's most sacred part of his home, and it only happened on the Day of Atonement. But because of Christ being this perfect high priest, um, he doesn't just go where God resides in heaven to represent us, but rather gives us access to God ourselves. It, it's as if when Christ died and the temple of the curtain was torn, uh, that at that moment, any barrier between us and God was completely removed that we could approach God freely and boldly. Christ, our high priest, gives us direct access to God where we can come to him with our concerns, with our failings, and and know that we will be met. And and this happens at God's throne, the the place that most signifies God's majesty and power. Um, But even with that, we are still able to approach the throne of God with confidence because of what Christ did for us. So the word shows us of our need of Christ, and Christ makes a way for us to be directly with God. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And again, it all starts with God's word. Friends, we may be blind to what, uh, what is really going on in our hearts, um, but God's word is the revealer for us. 
When we study God's word together or at home, we are laying ourselves um, bare before God, asking God to change and transform us. Every time we open this book, if we are truly seeking to learn and encounter and grow God or grow from God, um, the living God meets us and speaks to us. Every time we open the Bible, um, God is drawing us back to him. To read God's word is to believe that God is still speaking to us today. Uh, And it's it's truly an amazing act of faith and one of the most important things that we can do as believers. And God, God doesn't just use his word to convict us of our failures. No, God uses his word to shower us with blessings. And I've seen this again and again in my life. At my, my last job, I, I served as a youth minister for over a decade. I truly loved it. I loved working with the youth. Uh, it was such a great joy. But uh, there was also a, a lot of periods of, of uh, you know, where it was just really hard for me. Uh, there were times that the progress was really slow, and I would, I would question if all this effort I was putting in was worth it, if I was making a difference in the lives of my kids and I remember on one of those days that I was really, really struggling with this, I turned to God's word. And I read um, what God was doing in the lives of the apostles in the book of Acts. And, and I was reminded um, by God that these same apostles uh, were huge works in progress. Um, that, you know, it wasn't long before these stories in Acts that they had abandoned and betrayed Jesus Uh, acting in selfishness and fear when Jesus got arrested. Um, And I thought about how if you just stopped reading at that moment when Jesus is on the cross, it it would look like everything he did was in vain, that even these people that he had given so much of his life to had abandoned him. Um, But then as you see uh, the Spirit's work in this group in Acts, you see the amazing fruitfulness that came out of Jesus' work. And, and, you, and I began to sense that, you know, sometimes these seeds we plant take longer to grow, um, but it doesn't mean that I haven't been planting good seeds in their, in their lives. And friends, this is how, how God works in, in his word. Uh, it, it helps us take our blinders off. It, it helps us really see ourselves and our world as we ought to. There have been other times that I've read God's word that I hear God reminding me of my worth, which isn't centered in um, what I can do or accomplish, but comes from, um, from God who has called me and chosen me as his child. There's times I read God's word and I'm reminded who my true provider is, which helps me let go of these things that I'm holding on to in fear. There's times I read God's word uh, and, and I hear a word of promise and encouragement that gives me, me hope to persevere in, in tough times I'm going through. There's times I open God's word seeking wisdom and God's word gives me what I'm looking for. Friends, it would be impossible for us to, to count all the many ways that, that the Spirit has used God's word to speak to us to speak truth or love or correction or mercy or peace or hope or or faith in in a way that we needed to hear it. It is in these words that God is is so often choosing to meet us. And it's through the the pages of, of Scripture that we are led slowly and steadily back into the arms of our Savior who who walks with us to the throne of God who provides for all of our needs. Because of this, I encourage you to immerse yourself in God's word. Let us wear out the pages of our Bibles together. Let us become so full of the word that we carry it with us in our head and in our hearts. Let us seek to lay lay bare our hearts before God so that we may know how much we need the Lord and, and how much he loves us. By doing so, we will start to remove our blindness And we can be a part of God's work to remove the blindness from the rest of the world. So all may may see clearly the perfect love of God. Amen. 
So friends, if you're able to stand, I invite you to join in singing our next hymn, 144, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Thank you, friends. You may be seated. Will you join with me in saying what we believe about our great high priest using the words from uh, Philippians chapter 2? Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, being found in human form. 
He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Amen. Psalm 118 tells us to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. As we become more and more of the ways that God has been gracious to us, we are called to respond in gratitude. So let us take a moment to reflect on these blessings from God together and then bless the gifts given in gratitude this morning. Let's pray. Loving God, we remember the times you have shown love to us in a special way. We remember the people in our lives that bring us joy. We remember the ways that you have provided for our needs. We remember when you forgave us and set us right again. We remember the opportunities you have given us to be a part of blessing others. Truly, God, you have been so good to us. So we offer to you these humble prayers of gratitude and our offerings of our treasures to you. May you use these gifts to transform us and the world around us. Amen. So friends, there's a number of things we can be praying for this morning as we give to the Lord our, our concerns. Um, Marge's uh, sister, or is it sister-in-law? Um, sister-in-law, Nora Benlo, uh, was in, has been in the ICU for heart issues, so let us uh, continue to pray for her. Um, we are grateful for um, Josh's surgery and going to pray for his ongoing recovery of his shoulder. Um, let us pray for Doris Devonley, who was diagnosed with a brain tumor, I believe, last week. Um, let us pray for this fall uh, fest outreach that we have going on next weekend, that the Lord would draw people to our church and our community through it. And we have several other prayer requests here. Please pray for uh, Sue Moose, who's having cataract surgery tomorrow. Please pray for Rachel and Luther Swager and their children. Rachel and Luther apparently may have COVID. The children are all well so far. Um, please remember to pray for my family. I have a couple living in my house rent-free um, for a while, and they're trying to move out um, yeah, so having difficulties with the rental situation and people who would not like to leave. So let's lift this person up in prayer. Pray for Ruth Eby as she celebrates 101 years on Wednesday. Wow, that is Polly's mother-in-law. Friends, Christ has walked in our shoes and knows our struggles, so let's go to, um, to our friend in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your word, which reminded us today of the hope that we have through you. You loved us so much that you've entered our world as our peer, choosing to live each day with all the same struggles and hardships and trials that we face. That we face. You, you know the pain of loss. You know the sting of rejection and betrayal. You experienced unjust treatment. You know what it's like to not have others believe you. You also know what it's like to get sick, be wounded, and feel frail. It is truly amazing, Lord, that you could love us so much that you would leave your throne in heaven to be united with us in every way. We remember as well that Hebrews tells us that you are back in heaven again, serving as our high priest and intercessor before God, that we may know perfect forgiveness for our sins and also be given direct access to our God. 
Through you, there is no need to ask for others to speak on our behalf, but every day, wherever we are, we can close our eyes and speak with the one who created us and calls us beloved child. So knowing how loved we are, we present to you our concerns. We lift up to you our concerns for all those that we love. We give to you our concerns for our brothers and sisters in Christ here at this church and in other places. We pray for those who bear wounds of the mark of disease in their bodies, hearts, or minds. We remember the communities and peoples of this world who are experiencing hardship of some kind and ask for justice and mercy for them. We pray for those who need uh, to hear or receive hope this week. We pray that your love would be manifest to all people, that in good times and bad we would learn to live with confidence and peace, knowing how thoroughly you take care of us. We pray all this in your name, Lord Jesus, and we pray this prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, we have one last hymn, um, 341, Blessed Assurance. I invite you to stand and join us in praising God. Friends, may you choose to open your Bibles every day and be transformed by the Lord who will speak to you through it. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of of the Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Go in peace.